Hello and welcome back in other waters. Wondering We could use this, but I don't want to get rid of. Is there any reason for us to try and go further? We should go I think we should go back. We should try and go back as fast as we can. Oh wait, 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 that's my this. If you can give me some more samples, I could bring you some oxygen. No, I can't replenish any oxygen like that. But it will grant us safe passage somewhere. Beyond the bubble, the green clouds gather again. The water sapped off all oxygen. What can be fueling this endless world? In this northern part of the bloom, there's little shelter in this home of green. I green in every direction. I can see nothing. There is little to observe this far into the bloom. So we'll go back, we'll gather more, uh, more oxygenating little fit fellas. I think it ends. Yes, we can't go that far. There's no more of them. I think we are... we're gonna die. We can't thrust. All we can do is try to hurry. What is this fella? He's doing... Meh. He's doing fine. Able. Go back. Can't. What's going on? The su suit is shutting down. Belt at risk operator override active. What happened? Are you back online? Yes. Good. I think the suit's preservation protocols kicked in. It brought us back to this very way station. It was lucky. Please. I need you to keep an eye on our oxygen and power. Let's not do that again. Now? Where were we? Let's lock them while we still can. For something horrible happens again. And we'll take anything we can get some oxygen from. <laughs> we have mainly. Oh! I think we will have lots of those. That's very rich in oxygen. That is rich in oxygen. Is okay, it's interesting.
Wait, we have that much to... No, <laughs> just an update. Chemical analysis of a signal stock tissue sample has confirmed the presence of yeast like mingles and large of ethanol saturated in the tissue itself. This prompts a rethink of why many creatures target the hard to get signal stocks on our foodstuff. Uh, wait, we read it? Yes, we read it already. Okay. So let's get back to Central Reef. We'll try with the bloom. Again. We have all, yes, we have all our samples. Now we can go straight without wasting too much oxygen. Without wasting more than we have to. through here. I don't think we could do something else nice now. And I'll take the sample. Should be full, yes. I will use one of those to replenish. I will use two of those to replenish the oxygen. Because I this is why I took so many <laughs> samples that we already had. Rock outcrops and fans the visibility in the bosom falls to near zero. Okay, let's play this. And I thought he should start eating them. But we are going that way. Like stone tumors, these rounded rocks rise up out of the craving toxic clouds. The rear side of this farm, three of the green strings of Michael Gold has a pale apple shield. The burning clouds of the bloom roll across the rocks. I am naming these bloom fans. When we finally get out of this place, I'll update the basis of taxonomy logs. Pale, delicate fans that feed on the bloom by filtering it through their bodies, using a catalytic dust to counter its toxicity. Maybe should have something in it. The microbial life of the bloom blankets very surface. What other life has back in this toxic landscape? Though the green clouds have been bright glows in the dark ahead. Strange glittering domes mark the only patterns of all silk in the silk, whatever inhabited them is long dead. Like the nests themselves, which are woven from transparent threads, the bubbles which protect them also seem to have a delicate skin. Protected by the sheer wall of the blue central ridge, this open nest flutter with the movement of the swarm. Okay. 
this splitting the bloom this vast ridge descends to the north where it may be possible to cross tucked into the ridge wall this bubble is filled with oxygenated water filtered for some unknown method of process The south, the central ridge of the bloom reaches up, disappearing into green clouds of foam. The rock here is mottled with dark patches as if burned by electrical currents. Rocks just jut out from the green at the strange angles. A sicky pale green light filters down into the rocks. Partially concealed among layers of rock, this fan slowly undulates, creating catalytic gas. Do I have any space? Can use this root again. Flashes flicker across the shattered strata of rock. When you see blue, it means it should be away. Huge plates of layered rock make the floor here into jagged part of the small overhangs. The rock outcrops of this area are clogged with strings of microbial growth which dance in the slow of the ground. A large bulbous frog emerges out of the rock while silt gathers in the winding. Silt gathers in the winding cracks that score its surface. When active, these creatures feed directly on the microbial growth of the bloom, rapidly clearing a patch of oxygenated water. The ghost of some equipment lies in the silt, one of the many pieces of the nice expeditions into the bloom. The nearby bubble sits alone in this flat plain and scorched by the chemical processes of billions of metabolizing cells. These beautiful lifeless shapes, like a sculptor abandoned works, gather around the way station looking gently in the ground. This side of the bubble seems so close to the way station. If it were to shrink, any foothold we have in this green desert would be lost. When their protective bubble began to fail, these creatures burst from their nest to repair them, swarming out to leave more friends. This nest is the way station protector. Without it, swarms of iridescent life, the station would be a little more than rust eaten frame. It must have been struggled to assemble the metallic cage of this way station so deep in the room. What might be there out there? Finally, a way station. With this active, we can call for a travel all across the bloom, useful when we run low on oxygen. Open the terminal and we can resupply, and see if we now left any map data behind. Okay, I've got her logs here. A lot of trips back and forth between here and laboratory? That means she must have set up a remote lab somewhere deeper into the bloom. She spent months making trips to it, very in some lab chillers from elsewhere in the bloom to here. She was studying something, something important to her. We have to find the lab. I'll log the coordinates on the dive map when we get back to the base. First things first. This fizzing border between the bloom and the oxygenated water within is, is a welcome sight.
We've been so close. Really, it was just out of reach. Just out here. We're so close. I want to see what was... There was some... Place we haven't seen yet. Shards of rock with green cloud between turn the seafloor into a miniature landscape. The strange little creatures are getting a big name. Evolve boom boom vase. What do you think? It's great. I like it too. You can log them into the text when we back up the days. Piles of silt have gathered up against these mouthed rocks, filling the gaps beneath the strange distorted overhangs. I found a faint creature which conceals itself within a shell as a form of protection, and when awoken fits onto bloom stocks of microbes. Between these two rocks, a pile of shell fragments has gathered. A bronze one glimmers among the green. It sampled. Okay. Uh. Evolve shell. No, we don't need it yet. Between the sharp rock, a pale strip of sun leads on throughout the green. A dragged edge split opens up in a rock shelf, a place for green clouds to gather. Layers of rocks stick out from beneath the silt, eaten away by the microbes of the bloom. In, this, in the rusted holes of the rock shell, silt has gathered, only a rare shell of the life in the bloom. The bloom is blindingly thick here, but to the southwest something goes between the microbe of clouds. These plants seem to grow closer to the rocks, perhaps for shelter from stronger currents. Faint signature of a metal alloy, perhaps the remains of equipment near brought into the bloom. What was she doing here? Nothing but sharp rocks and green water. The shattered rocks catch microbial streams drifting in the water. Trapping himself in a shifting web of air. Of air.
Okay, he works. So it doesn't it doesn't work. Oh, wow. There's nothing on see that. I'm sure we have missed something. Yeah. I don't know if the bloom loops on the inside because I've had to glow like I've found the rain. Something. Like I've found the rain. Found it before me. The rocks here blend into whole world shapes. What natural process caused this? I think we can go back. We've been pretty much everywhere. Chris Retrieval. After being lucky enough to come across an entire bloom vein shell, Analysis has provided some possible explanations for the creature's neurotoxin resistance. The shell itself was found to have radial patterns of tiny holes in certain areas, all of which were found to have a high concentration of the bloom neurotoxin. It seems that when the bloom vein is in its hidden resting state, Seeing something we are investigating too. Do you think she knows something we don't? Surely. She has to. Maybe she's holed up in the lab mentioned the lab data waiting for us. Let's find the lab. Okay. The shell itself was found to have radio patterns of tiny holes in certain areas, all of which were found to have a high concentration of the bloom neurotoxin. It seems that when the bloom vein is in its hidden resting state, it executes neurotoxin through its shell, processing the glucose in the bloom growth separately. This executed neurotoxin coats the bloom vein's shell and the surrounding area, making the creature potentially deadly to any predator. This adaptation to the bloom is from a highly effective defense mechanism, even if the bloom vein itself is constantly on the edge of a frenzy, neurotoxin induced death. Bloom fans are delicate and pale fan-shaped creatures that filter the toxic microbes of the bloom. As, a, as tall as a human and with a wide span of pale spines that form a fairy-like shape, they are instantly recognizable in the green, clouded water of the bloom, anchoring themselves into the sand with a central stem. The bloom fans filtration leads to a small patch of oxygenated water on the leeward side of the fan. Bloom fans seem to be sensitive to currents, adjusting their angle for the detachment of microbial growth, and also can often be seen shivering in order to free their delicate filaments of bloom growth. How they contend with the high toxicity and deoxygenated waters of the bloom is unclear, but perhaps analysis of the dust that coats their spines may offer some clues. Oh, that's a lot. And bloom fans thrive in the snow drop of the bloom where the fastest currents keep our spines clear if we need the palm dust. This is the place we get it, so this is very, very, very Just look somewhere over there, we'll be fine. But that will be we'll do next time. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!